Hello my fellow courtroom companions. Thank you for stopping by the channel and in today's video I'm going to talk about interrogatories and what they are. So this video is primarily for those of you who are representing yourself in court, not for those who have an attorney. Um, but as always, I'm not an attorney, but I represented myself for about 18 months during my uh, court battle and I did um, secure temporary custody while I was uh, representing myself um, and the other side had an attorney. Um, I eventually did get my attorney um, back. I had to let him go just because of finances, but then I got him back and he did help me to secure permanent custody. Uh, but I'm sharing with you what I learned uh, throughout this journey. So if you haven't yet seen the introduction video to my channel, I encourage you to uh, watch that and I'll link that above. And before I get into this content, I wanted to just remind you to uh, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification so you can be notified when I upload videos. So today's video is just going to be about interrogatories and what they are and just to how to navigate them. Uh, what are interrogatories? Um, interrogatories is just a fancy legal name for questions. They're just questions that you are going to ask the other side or the other party or they are going to ask you. And so it's just a set of questions. And they are being sent in order to obtain answers um, for an upcoming hearing or trial. And so uh, the other party is going to seek information from you through interrogatories and you're going to send interrogatories to them seeking um, information from the other side. So the interrogatories are the second half of the discovery process. And if you haven't yet seen the uh, video I did on the request for production of documents, which is the other side of the discovery process, I'll link that above for you as well. And you might want to check that out because there's a lot of tips that I offer in there that can apply to this video as well. So I'm going to reference that video quite often. So definitely encourage you to watch that one after this one. So interrogatories typically, it's a set of questions and they typically begin with a set of definitions. And so I have a set here, which I'll just read you a couple of the definitions so you know what I mean by definitions. One of them is the pronoun you refers to the party to whom these interrogatories are addressed and the persons mentioned in clause F. Um, they have where knowledge or information or possession of a party is indicated. Such request includes knowledge, information, or possession of the party's agents, representatives, and unless privileged, his attorneys. And so they usually begin with a set of like understandings or definitions that you need to keep in mind uh, while you uh, read the rest of the document. So definitely read that part first. So courts typically limit the number of interrogatories that the other party can ask you and that you can ask the other party and it's usually between like 25 or 35 uh, questions and so you'll have to figure out what that is for your particular court system um, and you can probably find that out just by calling the clerk's office it can tell you what the, the limit is and typically you have to um, answer those questions within 30 days and the other side has the same 30 days to respond uh, with the answers to those questions and um, in the production of documents uh, video that I just referenced um, I have tips on there in, in that video on how to make sure that you don't miss the deadline. Um, so definitely watch that video uh, after this one. So as in the request for production of documents, it's similar for this in that you don't have to answer every single question if you find that the question is inappropriate in some way. And so I'm going to read an example of something that um, you can object to. So I'm going to read the question and I'm going to tell you how the attorney responded so you can see what I mean. So this is a pretty long question so let me read that. It says, if you provide health insurance coverage for the minor child, provide all reasons why you believe it is in the minor child's best interest for you to provide the health insurance for the minor child when the defendant also has health insurance coverage for him as required under the order. The cost to you of providing said health insurance coverage for the minor child which insurance you submit when bringing the child to a treating physician, the cost for all medicine and supplies when purchased through your health insurance provider, and the date you applied for coverage for the minor child. So that was like one question, which had like eight questions inside of it, but still presented as one question. And the answer that was provided by the attorney was, objection to the form of the question, question which assumes facts, not in evidence. So in that case, the attorney responded that it, and, 
basically it wasn't an appropriate question because it assumed facts not in evidence. So they, the question was being asked as though it was facts and it wasn't. So that's the way that you can respond. So similar to the production of documents, the interrogatory piece of this also follows um, the rules of evidence that govern the discovery process. And so um, the rules of evidence, you'll have to look those up uh, for your county, uh, but they are there so that one party isn't asking um, questions that um, are not going to be used in the court battle. So they don't want you to overly burden the other side. And so you have to be careful about the kinds of questions that you ask the other side and they'll have to be careful about the questions they, that they ask you. And typically um, an attorney, it, let's say the limit of questions is say 33. Um, typically an attorney will not ask all 33 up front because they want to save a few. So they might ask 25 and save eight in the pocket so that if they have other questions later, they can submit supplemental interrogatory questions to you as well and, and, and vice versa. Um, so that's another tip is that save some of them back. Don't ask, if your limit is 33, don't ask all 33 up front because you want to save some of them. I have included a template below of a set of interrogatories and I've kind of uh, blocked off all of the private information. Um, so that's there if you want to start with that. You don't have to start from scratch, but you'll want to look through each of the questions to see if they are appropriate for you. You might want to change some of them up, but at least it'll get you started. I'll include a, a link below to that document so you can start with that. So hopefully that'll be helpful to you. So that was the interrogatory process. Obviously answering the interrogatories will be an individual experience for each of us. And so if you have questions about how to fill out the answers to those interrogatories, you want to seek out um, some assistance from your court system. They might have a free law clinic or might have some uh, folks there that might be able to help you. So uh, definitely check out your local court system to see what resources are available. Well, that's all for today's video. I hope you found it helpful. Please let me know in the comments if you found it helpful or if you know more about the discovery process, please do help our viewers out and uh, put that below. And thank you for stopping by. Bye.